Welcome back guys. Today we will doing we will be doing Advent of Cyber 3 task 9. So, I think most of you know Advent of Cyber 3. There are many walkthroughs on YouTube about this event. And most of you know that this event actually lays down uh, every day you have one task to teach you one aspect of cyber security for beginners of course. Um, of course, you can find many walkthroughs on these. Today, I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing day day nine, task fourteen. So day nine, task fourteen is about Wireshark, and we talked about Wireshark, especially in the last video we analyzed uh, or used Wireshark to analyze a PCAP file for an infected machine. And today's video will be of less of less complexity than the last video in using Wireshark. So. Uh, in this video, we have a pickup file. We will be using basic filters, basic uh, operators to retrieve some information about an activity that took place on one of the, uh, as you can see from the description, MaxKD recently found out that a large amount of traffic is entering one system on the network. Use your traffic analysis skills to determine what kind of activities Grinch enterprises are performing. So again, we will use pick up this pickup file attached to this task to investigate the activities. It is less complex than the last video. Uh, filters are easy to learn, um, and we will also get started right now. So make sure you have the machine deployed and open the Wireshark file in the attacking machine. So let's now answer the first question. In the HTTP number one, get requests section, what's directory is found on the web server now for every question you can find a guidance on how to find the answer but again let's do that in real time so here the question is asking about http packets number one packets and specifically the get request so we would go to wireshark here and use the filter to display get request so http dot method dot request equal get so now we have narrowed down the packets to only include the packets that contain get requests now highlighting the first packet we can see the source destination protocol the length of the packet and the information about the request so the request here in this case it goes retrieves slash login slash login on this destination so what the question is asking which directory is found on the web server so we can type we can know it is login so we'll type now login all right now next question what is the username and password used in the login page in the number two hey http post section so let's dissect the question one by by uh, so, uh, so let, let's dissect so let's dissect the question piece by piece. First, we have the filter for post requests. Look at the packet number two and find the username and password used in the login page. And this is expected actually to find plain text uh, credentials in the packets since here the protocol uses HTTP, no encryption used. Now, in the filter here, all you have to do is to change from get to post. So upon changing that, we got a total of five packets. Looking at packet number two, we see there is a request from this IP to this IP to retrieve the login page located at slash login slash uh, login.php. And it is post request, which means uh, data is being sent from the source to the destination. Now we can retrieve the credentials actually by looking at the packet header in this section. So by expanding HTML form URL encoded, we can see password and we can see the submit and we can see the username. So by expanding this section in the packet header section, we can see the login information. So in this case, it's username as MaxKitty. We can copy that. So username and the password is here. Christmas 2021 exclamation mark. Alright, now next question, what is the user agent's name 
that has been sent in the number two HTTP post packet section here. So again, we are looking at the same packet, but in this, this time we are trying to locate the user agent. So to locate the user agent, guys, what we can do, we can expand the hypertext transfer protocol section in the packet header. We can see information about the destination, which is 10, 10, 10, 4. And we can see the user agent used to retrieve uh, the pack at the uh, page. So now let's see the answer formula. So we have the flag. And again, we have some text preceding the flag. So we can copy that, all of that, and answer that. Now, an alternative way to find these information, guys, is to right click on the packet itself. And as we have illustrated so many times in the previous videos, we can follow the TCP stream. In the TCP stream, you will see detailed view on the packet. Again, you see here the uh, post request. You see the server response down here. And also you can extract the answers from here. So basically you can find the user agent. You can find, um, if you if you scroll down, let's scroll down, see if the username is here. So the username doesn't exist here. We have to find it from the packet header, but, ah, no, it's here. Look, the password and the username so they are found again in the by or by following the tcp stream so now we click on x and we get out of that filter next in the dns section there is a text dns query what's the flag in the message of that dns query so in this question we will um shift our attention from dns at uh, http to dns Specifically, we'll be looking at the DNS packets and we're trying to locate DNS packets that contain text DNS query. Text is a type of DNS record that contain text data. So to do that, first we have to know what, how, what, how, how can we uh, filter DNS requests, uh, DNS uh, packets. So we can do that by just typing here DNS or we can do um, UDB dot port equal five three okay so now we have tens of packets here as you can see and we cannot just go through all of these packets even if the number is low we cannot just go every through every single one of packet there must be a way to filter for text records so we can use a filter again dns dot dns dot query type okay and then we define the query type now for every query type there is a number that corresponds to the DNS record for example for a records we have one now for text records it is 16 now how can you find these numbers you can find them online just type Wireshark or type uh, DNS query numbers and you can find them so now we filtered only for text records or packets that contain text records. Now we can see two packets. Now back to the question. If we look again in the DNS section, there is a text DNS query. That what is the flag in the message of that DNS query? So we have to. So it's easy to look at two at only, at only two packets, right? So we expand the DNS system, domain name system, and we can see we can see the answers and the queries. By expanding the answers, packet to tryhackme.com, we can find the flag. Okay, now in the FTP section, what is the FTP login password? Now we will do a lateral movement from DNS to FTP in the Wireshark. So we shift the focus to FTP we display the FTP packets. Again, we have little number of packets, few packets here, so it's easy to go through every one of them. And of course, uh, don't forget that FTP is a protocol that transfers data in plain text. That's why 
you will be able to see details about the packet itself. So what is the FTP login password? Now we can take a look at the info column and we can see what's happening actually, what was happening when the packets were being exchanged. So we see now username tryhack FTP and now the person or the IP address here, the owner of the IP address tried to put the password and you can see here the password is tryhackme3 or tryhackm3. We can we can highlight the packets, go to the packet header section, expand the file transfer protocol and you can see the pass itself, request command, pass, request argument, which is the password itself. Uh, value okay in the FTP section what is the FTP command used to upload the secret file now we will back we will be back to uh, the packets here and now we're trying to find out what 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 is the command used to use what to upload the file so the file here if we take a look again at the sequence of events you can see the person has logged in and then they entered the passive mode and they used store secret.txt. So store secret.txt just uploads the uh, file. So the command is STOR. And to the last one, in the FTP section, what is the content of the secret file? Um, now again, at the same packet, we can just go to the packet header and see if we can find something about that uh, file so the packet header there is nothing here so i'm gonna right click and follow the tcp stream all right store secret.txt okay to send that transfer complete so um, i'm gonna go back Let's see here, FTP, and we will back to the same packet. What's the content of the secret text file? Okay, so basically here, if we expand again the file transfer protocol, we see the command, but again, we can't see the content of the file. Even if you look at the uh, next command and the last one, which is transfer complete. So to do that, we have to we have to um, you know find the data. So basically, there is a filter in Wireshark to find data. We can just type dash and type FTP data. So this will show all of uh, the data transferred in the FTP packet. Specifically, it shows the plain text data uh, transferred in files. So you will see a new line appeared here called line based text data so line pegs text data if you expand that you see a flag so the file it means that the file's secret of text contains uh, this content or this sequence of characters and numbers uh, so this means that the source or the filter ftp dash data shows you um, plain text content found in files uploaded to the server or the ftp server so you can right click and copy that so that was the answer i hope you guys liked the video it is if you if you like if you are a fan of reading you can go through the readings but i tried to summarize all of that in a small video about basic wireshark filters so that as that was it and see you in the next video